Farmers and ranchers are approaching the tail end of calving season. 79% of the state's cows have calved since January 1st. That means the breeding season is around the corner, and UNL Extension beef specialist Rick Rasby says producers can be thinking about using estrus synchronization as a management tool on their operations. We talked with Rick in the RB Warren Arena Thursday afternoon. Rick said after a cold winter, farmers and ranchers might first want to think about breeding soundness evaluations for their bulls. You know, it's, it's late. You're getting to the end and uh, a lot of bull sales are over, but there's still opportunity to buy some bulls. And the reason why I say that is we didn't get a lot of moisture this winter, but boy, there was some really cold nights and, and nights that uh, were not only cold, but they had um, low wind chill indexes. And so the wind blew a pretty good clip. And uh, uh, to me, the concern is, is that if you don't have protection for bulls or be able to bed them down in those kinds of conditions is that you can actually get um, some frostbite, especially on the scrotum. And so uh, that impacts uh, their ability to produce viable semen. And so that's just the reason why I'd say it's, it's not too late to do a breeding science evaluation on your bulls. If you haven't done it, I would do it. There's still opportunity to buy bulls out there. And so I just get it done because pregnant uh, cows are, are more valuable than non-pregnant yeah, cows. They absolutely <laughs> are. We're uh, towards the end of calving now, over yep. halfway through, well over halfway through. Uh, if you're going to be AIing, is it worth trying to implement an estrus synchronization program? I, I think it is. I think it's uh, it's a way that you can actually um, uh, increase the efficiency of your AI program, and it allows you to maybe uh, uh, do some things that you couldn't do without estrus synchronization. One of those is time breed, and so that means that you wouldn't have to do any heat detection. That you could basically time breed them uh, in some of these protocols based on when you gave the last injection of that particular protocol. And so I, I think it's worth the chips. And if you're going to do AI uh, and do the fact that a lot of times that we're short on labor and um, um, maybe some of the, 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 the folks aren't as good at, at detecting estrus, uh, maybe timed AI, AI would work really well in those programs. Ideally for the beef industry, there are a lot of heifers out there to try and rebuild that herd. Yeah. Is there a difference between heifers and cows? You know, there there is in regards to uh, synchronization programs, there are. And um, one thing I tell you is that uh, the uh, the Beef Reproductive Task Force goes through these estro synchronization programs. Uh, Dr. Rick Bunkston in, on our staff is part of that reproductive task force, and they evaluate and actually do research on different estro synchronization programs. And, and you can look at uh, any um, AI stud catalog, and they'll be in there. Uh, you can also, uh, at least on our beef website, beef.unl.edu, on the right-hand side, uh, there's a, a navigator bar that will point you towards the, uh, uh, their website. And uh, when you get there, you can pull off the estrus synchronization programs that are for cows and ones that uh, they would recommend or at least approve for heifers as well. Just to recap, the uh, UNL studies have shown that uh, it's important to get those calving within, what, the first 21 days? You know, that's uh, when you take a look at it from an economic standpoint, uh, whether you use AI or you use natural service, it's just important to get uh, a good... Uh, number of those females calve in the first 21 days but it makes sense right because those females that calve early basically wean off heavier calves and uh, and you take a look at what Dr. Funson's data uh, would suggest uh, there's also some production kinds of things that are attributed to that as well. Uh, you said uh, with these tools that you can get on the UNL Beef website, uh, there are some synchronizations where you can just plug in your numbers and go, and they'll ask you then for your email, which would give you updates. Yeah, in fact, uh, uh, if you go to the uh, to the uh, Reproductive Task Force website, which you can get basically through our website, uh, if you go to the uh, resource page, there will be um, one of the resources will be the Estrus Synchronization Planner. It was a planner put together by Iowa State, and uh, it used to be for a fee, and now it's free. And uh, you can actually click on download that Esther synchronization planner. Yeah, it'll download as an Excel spreadsheet. And I think one of the things that they'll ask you is a um, is an email address, and basically they want that so that they have, they have any updates, they can get those to you. Rick mentioned a few tools available online through the UNL Beef website. We'll link to that information on the Market Journal homepage.